Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, yeah, after this, yesterday's video got quite a good reaction. I thought maybe I should do another one. About five takeaways from the test match. Um, so yeah guys, here are five takeaways from the Springboks test against the All Blacks in Auckland. Number one. Guys, the first point is there's no need to panic. I know we four games out from the World Cup, nine weeks away from the World Cup at the moment. And yes... Uh, I think the start is still what rattled everybody the way the box started. We expected a lot better start and a lot closer game. And the All Blacks had the Springboks number, let's be very honest. But there's there's definitely no need to panic, and I don't think the box will be panicking. They'll mark it off to a bad day at the office. And uh, they'll probably look for, for answers as to why it happened and why they were beaten. Because they are a side that can beat the All Blacks. And they, they have proved in Wellington. They play a lot better in Wellington and Auckland, though. Uh, I think history over the years has said that. Uh, but, yeah, this is a team that we expect better from. And I think everybody, after the Australian game, there was such a positive vibe going into this game. Of course, you have to say that there's a huge difference between Australia and New Zealand at the moment. And I think anybody uh, who's watched that will probably get that confirmed in the next week or so when the, the two, two, two of them meet. But, yeah, the All Blacks are definitely a force and they were definitely up for the game against the box. And the way they started... Yeah, it just was one of those times that everything went wrong for the Springboks. Uh, I don't think I've seen, I think I said this yesterday as well, I don't think I've seen a, a Springbok team rattled so much and have everything go wrong for them in the first 20 minutes. I think it was probably the worst performance under, first, first sorry, the worst 20 minutes under Jacques and Rossi, um, yeah, since they've been together and, and coaching the box. But it's no reason to panic. The, the fundamentals are still good. The depth is still there and the box still have the game plan to beat most of the sides. I think probably, as I said yesterday, uh, yeah, it's rather better that it happened now. There's time to work on it and you'll, I can bet you the box will be working on it extremely hard over the next couple of weeks. We should see them in the next week or so when they come back and they'll face a lot more questions about it. But yeah, this is a team that's won the World Cup. They know how to do these things. Yeah, we've we saw them recover in the World Cup in 2019 from a loss in the opening game uh, to go on to win the tournament. So I don't think you should write them off. I don't think there's room to, to, to panic. And I think there's there are concerns. Rather go into a World Cup knowing that you have to work harder than going to a World Cup supremely confident and be shocked. So I'm not too worried about that one. Speaking of that, that brings us to number two, the, the, the second point that I want to make. Um, these bad starts do need to have some scrutiny, and I'm sure the Springboks will be having a look at that. Uh, if you look at it, they started badly at Ellis Park against the All Blacks. They started badly against France, or that, that was a red card, so you can't really uh, you know, take that into account. But they, they've had some bad starts in the last year in crucial games. And you know the World Cup is a place where you want to be at your best. You don't want those sort of factors to come into a game. And it also just makes it so much harder to come back after, you know, after a bad start of, of conceding points. You don't want to chase a game. You know, that's, that's the easiest way to go out of the World Cup, and you don't want to give away red cards. So there'll be a lot of work-ons for that in the next couple of months, a couple of weeks, should I say. And I think we'll probably see a different sort of attitude when they come, or a different team when they come out against Argentina. It's still going to be an epic battle, because Argentina did extremely well against uh, the Wallabies, um, really, and the amount of passion they showed in that game is amazing. So the, it's not going to be easy for the box, but that's what you want. You want some tests. You want to be able to, um, to, to, you know, get, well, what's the word? Uh, panel beat, no, they refine uh, and tweak your game plan going into a World Cup. And yeah, this has given the box some stuff to work on, and I'm sure they'll work on it a lot. Point three is. Um, yeah, it's, a, <laughs> it's probably a controversial one, and that's probably one that a lot of fans agree with. Uh, maybe not all the box agree with, but um, I think what they have done is they've the depth has got to such a point now where you can't really tell whether it's an A or B team, who's in the A and who's the B team. I think that in the last couple of years was quite apparent. The, guy, the guys who won the World Cup were very much in the A team, and there was very much another team out there, sort of a dirt tracker type team that the box wanted but the, what they've done and succeeded in doing in the last sort of year or so is is get the team so much depth start developing so much depth and and start using players that there's there's more depth in that squad now than there's ever been and those players are starting to come through so they're putting pressure on that and after yesterday there'll be a lot of pressure on those players Jacques did say 
the box management did get the answers they wanted. There's a couple of squad members who haven't played. We'll probably see them in action against Argentina. And uh, then we'll have a better idea of precisely who's in the, who in the pecking order. I think there are definitely a couple of players under pressure, and, uh, and we're going to see hopefully a response from them. But that's what you want. You want healthy competition in the squad. But uh, the fact that there's no A or B team anymore, yeah, the, you can you can actually say that's a very healthy thing for Springbok selection. And then you'll choose according to what the opposition brings as well, and who's going to who's suited best to dismantle their game plan. So that's that's point number three. It's going to be interesting to see what the selection will be for Argentina, but uh, I think we'll get a much better idea around about that test match. Point number four um, is a quite clear one from Saturday's test match. Uh, the All Blacks can no longer be written off at the World Cup. Not that the you know, South Africans would ever have written them off, but there's some people in the Northern Hemisphere that don't think they're going to be a factor. They've certainly tweaked their game plan. They've become a lot tougher. And yes, they're playing at home, but they're still a team that's got so many threats, so many playmakers in that back line. And they, their forward pack really stood up. So, yeah, they're going to still be a big factor at the World Cup. Their coaching staff will want... You know, players to stand up in big games and there's no bigger game than the one yesterday uh, or one on Saturday shall I say if you're watching this after the weekend uh, But and that was where those players stood up and you know, the, the, the fact that they sort of quelled um, you know, the Bok come back with the bomb squad and still managed to score two late tries you know, to sort of make the game the scoreline quite comfortable shows that there's a lot more to this All Blacks side with Joe Schmidt has come in he's, he's obviously done quite a bit and uh, their forward coach Jason Jason Ryan has, has done exceptionally well with that pack as well so they're going to definitely be a factor I think you know, it's going to be an epic epic World Cup and there's going to be some tough tough games in that World Cup that we're going to see uh, but the All Blacks you can't write them off and you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they well, I wouldn't say shock a few teams but it, they surpass some people's expectations of them going into the World Cup and that brings us also to the final point uh, in this takeaways from the, the, the and that brings us also to the final point in these takeaways from from the test match in Auckland uh, and that is just to underline once again what a farcical selection uh, process it was for the pools for the World Cup. Uh, having having the draw three years out, how ridiculous that was! That you're going to go into a World Cup with four of the world's best sides and the one half of the draw, and two of them that will be exiting by the quarterfinals, just after the quarterfinals, no matter how well they play or how badly they play. Uh, you know that's ridiculous. You want your best sides in the knockout rounds, and it's fine if there's an upset, but when the draw does it to you, that the top four sides in the world and one side, I think World Rugby's uh, yeah made a horrible mistake there and um, I'm sure they won't, they'll never admit it but they won't do it again and we'll probably see it revert to back to a year out from the World Cup as well um, yeah, it's some of these decisions have really backfired on them and um, yeah worth, worth underlining just how badly uh, this draw has been done in France and uh, yeah other than all the other problems with France 2023 I mean, you know, from a South African point of view how South Africa was robbed and of course, all the allegations that have come out in court cases in France about uh, alleged corruption. Um, yeah, it just uh, yeah, it leaves us a bad taste in the mouth going into the tournament, which should actually be a celebration of the sport. Anyway, those are my five takeaways. If you have any that you want to add, please feel free to put them below. And then, I'm not going to tell you to subscribe, because if you have subscribed, great. But um, I just want to tell you to watch out on, on a Thursday, every Thursday at 9 a.m., I do a podcast with Liam Del Con, the Sunday Times rugby writer, uh, and we speak all things rugby, and we have a glass of wine at the same time. So wine and rugby, good, good, uh, good combination. So have a look out for that in on all major platforms on Spotify, Apple, iTunes, Amazon, Google Podcasts, and on iona.fm. Yeah, have a look out for that, and uh, please go listen and tell us what you think. It'd be great. It's a new something new we're trying. And it's always good to get feedback. Cheers.